she's always talking about it. Uh, Ellen Cavalacci's daughter goes there. Daughter. Yes. I redid that. It's at the end of Rule One, right? Right, right at Rule Sixty Two. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty Two. Yeah. That's exactly. I heard the pop and was afraid to look. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful facility. Yeah. From the highway, anyway, it looks like it. The, the, the building's gorgeous. The old campus. Yeah. Why are we starting on? Just curious. Um, because we have an executive session at the chair. Why did we start at six? Yeah. Summer hours. Yeah. To get out. Do we always start at six? No. <laughs> no. I don't know. Next we week were it's messing five. around with these start times because we Next week didn't know when we, we never, were having we them. We never met on donations and how important all the donations are to our school district and we greatly appreciate it so all those in favor and that's five zero excellent uh, we do not have a student report and the director of student services assistant superintendent I have uh, two two things to say tonight um, so we are uh, just about finishing up our first ever Reading Institute summer. Uh, we're running five courses this week, um, and we have about 80 teachers participating um, in topics ranging, 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 sorry, it's been a long day, um, from trauma-sensitive work, um, special ed, especially in the area of math instruction, which is 
pretty exciting. Um, sheltered English Immersion and looking at equity, which I got a phenomenal email about uh, one of our ELL teachers, Karen Hall, is teaching that. And uh, somebody sent me a very positive email today saying it should be a must for everyone in the district. Um, and we're also doing a reading workshop course uh, that our new, um, I don't know if we, we can still call ourselves new, but our literacy um, humanities coordinator, Allison, is co-teaching with several teachers so that uh, the teachers will be ready to lead it in the future. And we also have an executive functioning course um, that we brought in um, some folks from Landmark to help us with. So uh, we're really excited about it. Um, this is the first time we've done it in this forum. Um, and we did it right after school ended, and uh, 80 folks decided that it was worth spending two days of their time. Each course was two days. Um, and so uh, we're really excited to bring that. Um, and that's my PD hat. Um, my other hat is, of course, the curriculum hat. Um, and it, I, I think I mentioned in an earlier school committee meeting that uh, we are working on the um, high school curriculum guides mm -hmm. and they're just about finished um, so we're finishing up them and then the next I know I said by the end of school but in fairness we ended a week early so um, between vacations and such we'll be finishing them up in the next few weeks um, we've got the website ready to go and we're just wordsmithing uh, editing doing some last-minute checking although I'm sure people will find further edits um, but uh, we're still gonna be adding to them they're mostly just the core subjects um, not all the departments have all of theirs up, but um, we're excited about them. It, it, the staff at the high school worked really diligently in their teams to really have conversations about like what does English 9 look like um, so that we could come to real consensus on that. Um, and, and we're pretty proud of the work that we've done, and, and it's really spearheaded a lot of next step conversations. But those will be up in the next few weeks. Um, I'll definitely be tweeting that out and blogging that out when those are up so that folks can be looking for them. Um, but there will also be a feedback piece as well built into that so that if um, folks have questions or comments or things that they want. Refresh me. There was the curriculum, oh, maps and the guides. The guides are for the parents? So the guides are the community, two pages. Okay, yeah. Some of them are three, actually, at the high school. Um, we tried to keep them brief. They're really a snapshot of, like, what does biology look like? Um, and it's, it's really a combination of what the state says we should be teaching and what we teach specifically in Reading. Um, and then moving forward, we're memorializing the internal documents of what does that look like. Mm -hmm. So we know that these are like, say, eight units in biology. What does that look like in the course of a year? Um, and the, lots of conversations around pacing and instructional best practices and resources, um, as well as common assessments and things like that. A lot of these things are in existence. What we're really working hard at in my department is to memorialize that and to have sort of a robust spot that we can say this is where these things live and this is where our uh, you know staff can access them and we also want to have a place for community members to see really exactly what what a year in the life of a subject looks like we already have them up for elementary um, so if if this committee or the general public wants to take a look at my learning and teaching page um, all of the elementary ones. We haven't done social studies yet because we're still working on the curriculum changes there. But um, the other core subjects at elementary are already up. Um, and the high school ones look very similar, although they're more content specific. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Can, can I ask? And, yeah. and it builds on yeah. yours, actually. It's just sort of the language. Okay. So what you just described for the community is the guide. The guides. And then the, the maps. guides will, are, will be on the website. They are the public documents. They're internal documents as well because we wrote them um, yeah. and our staff worked on them. But they are really for everyone to sort of enjoy, look at, and and we we consider them living, breathing documents. We'll continue to to work on them and and change them as state changes things or we change things but we are then working on next steps of okay now we have these guides what does that look like in a year and are the is that next step the maps i'm just trying to get the language so I, yeah i would i mean i don't typically call them i call them curriculum resources but i think some people refer to them as maps linda and those things that would include like access to like videos or uh, resources or um, projects or websites so all of those rich resources as well as assessment pieces all of those rich teacher tools 
that say, you know, if you're teaching biology one, unit one, you're looking at cells, here's your rich bank of lessons that might be great that we've vetted, that we've said. Because we don't, as you know, teaching is an art. It's not just on day four we all do page 89. There are some districts that prefer that style of teaching. Um, we have really talented staff in Reading that know their content well, and we want them to be able to explore the boundaries. We don't put a ceiling on learning. Um, when we do the lockstep piece, that mapping that we, we sometimes hear, that sometimes can do that. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm really a fan on, you know, the, and you'll see when, when they're published, like in English, they'll tell you exactly what books are being covered. So yeah, these are the same books, depend, you know, doesn't matter what class you're in. If you're in, you know, um, SCP 10th grade, this is what it looks like, right? But that might be different, like I might, have students write a screenplay based on that story. Somebody else might have them, um, you know, write an interview with a character from the book as if they're on Oprah or something like that. So I mean, and we're and we're definitely talking a lot more in our conversations about performance assessments, um, and and really looking at that, you know, th that project-based learning and saying, what does this look like in the real world? What are the connections to real life? You know, if you were an engineer, how would you use this? If you were a screenplay writer, how would you use that? Um, and not just everything paper and pencil. We already do a lot of that, but really memorializing that and really kind of sharing best practices and having a vehicle and, and a space to do that. Again, I think a lot of these things already were in existence. I am certainly not going to tell you that, oh, since the year I came here, we're doing all this. It's just memorializing it. It's having places to really live and breathe with this stuff. Thank you. And is, can I just ask, is it, um, I don't know what the IT, I was thinking we're at work, we're moving so much to sort of like the OneDrive, the share files, things like that. Mm. Is it, is, the, is this easily shared across the departments or? Well, we're working the, on that. I think that's a, that's a further conversation. That's an IT thing. Yeah, that's definitely a further conversation of what does that look like. As far as what the community can see, we're going to have those yeah, in multiple right. places. Mm -hmm. Eventually, these guides will live on department pages as well as my page. So they'll, it'll, they'll be in multiple locations because we, mm -hmm. you know, we, and, and frankly, we've cleaned up a lot of our web pages. We're continuing to okay. do that. So we want people to be able to readily find these things. Great. Thanks. Any other Thank questions? You. I think, Gail, we're going to hold on because you're on the agenda. Dr. Doherty? Yeah, I just um, <clears throat> want to give a heartfelt thank you to all the principals, teachers, staff for um, a great last couple of weeks of school. Um, there's obviously a lot going on as, as schools are celebrating the end of the year. And it's also a very um, tense time of year for, for everyone as well. Mm -hmm. so be between report cards coming in and class assignments for next year, things like that. So um, as always, our staff did a great job. And um, we had a you know pretty good last couple of weeks. The last day was, was this past Monday. Um, up here was like a ghost town because it was makeup day for the high school exams, and so it was a motivation for most students to get them all done before uh, today. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, I just want to, you know, say thank you and a lot of celebrations going on this yep. uh, last week, and um, it was a great two weeks. Great, thank you, Dr. Darty. Uh, we I know that committee members are going to have reports. Um, we'll start with Mr. Parks. No, Ms. Borowski has probably a big report. Couple. Well, I'll, I'll update on Reading 375. Great. It happened. It was wonderful. Tremendous community yeah. response. And thank you. Many of you, I know, were at a lot of the events. So thanks for the participation. I also wanted to let the committee know that the CPAC met last week. We had our last meeting of the school year. Um, and it was really, really nice. There were um, relatively light attendance, just a handful of parents there, um, but a really forward-looking discussion. So um, I think a lot of gratitude was expressed to Ms. Stewart and the work she's done this year on an interim basis. So there's a lot of gratitude for her work um, and some discussion about calendaring and goal setting for next year that made me excited looking forward for that organization. So it was a really nice meeting. That's all I have tonight. Dr. Doxer. Um, Friends and Family Day? Yep, go for it. What a blast. Lots mm -hmm. of people, lots of great conversations, lots of the feedback that you don't necessarily get at school committee meetings, mm -hmm. questions, and also um, accolades for our teachers and our principals and our schools that I wish 
I wish they could have heard directly. It was very exciting. And um, thank you to all of the families who paused at our, at our tent and those children that created their students that we hung on the um, tent. We didn't quite make 375 mm -hmm. and some stayed with us. Our goal was 375 individual children. Um, we didn't quite make that, but um, some went home and some were hanging on our booth. It was really fun. So thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Reading. The connection with 375 was really powerful. And to the committee members who helped staff that. And uh, we also have a new banner for the table for these events. Yes. That um, we really appreciate that um, was a community member did the design and they're anonymous. They want it to remain anonymous, but it's great design. It includes our logo and it was a donation to the committee. Yeah. So we appreciate it because this is writing school committee art. Um, Mr. Robinson and then I'll go. None? So um, H, first of all, HRAC met last night and it's a small group. Um, a lot of what we talked about was um, sort of what's going to happen next. The, the HRAC is, is eventually going to be superseded by whatever develops out of the ad hoc committee. They do need additional members. Uh, we were pretty excited about the, very excited about the welcome, um, welcome to all sign that was on the <laughs> common. And we're going to see if we can get it back up there because it, it had a two week stint and then it had to come down, but there's nothing else up there. So we're going to pursue uh, seeing if we can put that back up. And we're working with the Reading Clergy Association to do a uh, family, a picnic. I think of the date. I think it's uh, last week of July, uh, weeknight, that we're um, going to do a picnic in the Memorial Park together with the Clergy Association. And it'll be like bring your own blanket, bring your own food, um, maybe some music. We will not do it on the night of the five-star production of Lion King. Does anybody know, is that right? I believe that, is that right, Lion King? So somebody said, we were picking the night, and somebody said, wait, that's the five-star production of Lion King. So, so that eight, that's HRAC, and on the ad hoc committee, um, Dr. Darty, myself, and Dr. Doxer are on the uh, representatives um, on the ad hoc committee, representatives of the schools and the school committee. And the ad hoc committee has met three times. They have a pretty aggressive schedule. We have a very aggressive schedule for the summer. The meetings are two hours, and they're like every other Monday. And uh, the leadership is now, it's now being chaired by um, Andy Friedman and Ann Landry. So there's been a, there was a leadership change due to the elections and all that sort of caused us to um, just delay our progress a little bit. Uh, However, so the, the HRAC was, and I had the mission on my phone, which I don't have my phone, uh, but the HRAC was assigned by the select board to recommend a new structure for a human relations in, the, in what they said it was advisory board. So the group is looking at different structures, but also looking at what's the needs of the community and probably going to try to do some validation within the community. So I think that's a good thing. So we made some good progress. And we had an audit committee meeting. And probably the only person here who really likes audit would be Mrs. Dowd. <laughs> but anyways, uh, Mr. Bovin and I are the representatives. He continues to be the representative. Um, and he, he's willing to do that for us going forward. The, I think you've been on audit. And Jean, were you on audit? Yep. So it takes a little bit of sort of learning process of getting used to if you've never done it before. But we were going over the town um, and the, the town annual report, I guess. And there were a number of different questions, but overall the report is very good, so. What did, yeah. what did they test? What did they meet? Did they have a, a test of anything, a report on? This, this was um, the annual town audit. There were no management letter findings. Right. So it's the regular process. So everything was clean. They didn't have a management letter. We, and there was no direction to the auditors to go look at anything closer? Or? Not that I am aware Although of. Although the town so. audit committee spent quite a bit of time talking about the OPEB. Uh, basically, if I get it right, I have to be looking at the report, but the, the way that the audit letter is written in terms of assumptions for the earnings on those accounts 
there's a 7.5% um, return rate, and the money is not in the state fund yet, the PIRB, there's an acronym, but it couldn't be in that fund yet because there was some action that town meeting had to take recently. <coughs> that action was taken and they're waiting for our attorney. So the committee was actually very, audit committee was very energetic about that should be a priority because we need to get that money like out of the sidelines and into a spot where it's going to earn that or we will get further behind on the OPEB. And there's a change, Gail would know this is Gatsby like 74, 75 or something. So there's a, there was a change and he was spent a lot of time sort of explaining the change and people were pushing back saying we want to see, you know, more years to be able to compare. But it's a little, you know, so I, all I could think about what we were talking about was like the, the MCAS changes, you know, you change the methodology and now you can't compare the data. But the, um, so I actually have the annual report. I could have brought it today. I gave it to you. So it was interesting. Um, so that's all the reports. I think, and so we're going to go into tonight. We have some capital budget updates for FY20. We have our FY19 final budget approval, and then we have a second reading of um, two policies. And I do want to let the board know that we're going to, Dr. Dardy and I are working on sort of drafting and, and starting of the calendar um, for the coming year. And one of the things that we're going to work to do is put policies on the calendar, a first reading and a second reading. So not two first readings, but we'll try to offset them. And, um, you know, one of the committee members has expressed some interest in some particular policies. And so if anybody has any specific policies that they think that we need to be, that we need to address, um, just let me know and we'll see about, like, prioritize them, get them into the calendar. And I do believe that we will, um, we will really be needing to engage to have uh, Colby, to have our attorney do a policy review as well. And um, I think we're going to have to have her get, get started on that so that she can also recommend areas where we might want to focus and recommend, you know, specific policy changes. So I think that's something that we'll endeavor to do on a sort of a every meeting, but not try to have it, you know, balance the, um, the agenda so that we don't have three hour or four, well, so we have four hour meetings. Um, so that will be going forward, but tonight we'll do the two second readings. And then we have a disposal of surplus equipment. So, and that will conclude. So we'll get started with the FY20 budget updates. Yes, so there are two memos in the packet, and this is just the final, I'll say, formality of approving the items for fiscal 20 that were approved as part of um, town meeting in the April-May time frame. So the first one is in regards to the capital. The items that are here reflect what we discussed when we presented the budget in January and then what was approved um, and put forth by Bob at town meeting. So a total of 266,000. Most of that is within the technology realm, the traditional 100,000 that we get to do district-wide updates um, that I work very closely with Julian on upgrading various components of district-wide technology. So whether it's servers, switches, items such as that, as well as we are cycling through updating the telephone systems throughout the district to make them all consistent. So each year we're cycling through another school. Um, next year we also, um, and this is, we work with facilities on this, the courier that works for the town, he has the old adult education car, so we are looking to replace that next year with most likely more of an SUV type given all of the items that are being transported around the town just to get something a little more sturdy for him as well as to replace a very aging car that he has. Um, the other items that we have, I, I just put a sentence uh, at the end of the second page to remind folks that as part of town meeting, they op also authorized 2.25 million of debt for Turf 2 replacement, as well as 4 million in debt related to the town-wide security project. So since those are debt funding, they don't really show up as a specific line item on here, but that was just to put in there 
as a reminder that those were approved as part of the capital plan, but it's just coming through as debt funding as opposed to just a one lump sum number in a year. And consistent with what we did this year, we will provide updates to the committee throughout the year next year, next year on all of these updates. And we do have an update scheduled for next Thursday on the status of the capital projects for this year. So we'll give an update on turf two at that time as well. Great. Any Call questions? Yeah. Mr. Coram. Jeffrey Coram, Ridge Road. I just think there's a typo on courier. I think it's C-O-U-R. Okay. I-E-R. Courier is like someone who works with animal hides, I think. C-O-U-R. Mrs. Browski. I don't have any. No, I... Oh, I should have caught courier it. Courier knives. No. <laughs> I think I just copied it out of work. Courier knives. Yeah, courier knives. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Dr. Doxer, can you read the motion? And then we'll, if there's any further discussion, we'll get to it. Can move to approve the final FY20 capital plan as it relates to the school department. Second. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Any other questions? Um, I just like to thank you, Ms. Stout. It's a very clear memo, and I appreciate it. So we'll take. Just, so yep. next week, you said we'll have an update on is it on on the turf two. We will be providing what? an update on turf two the elementary planning study and um, security. Oh, and so the security. Three, the sec caution security will be a non-update update. Right. Okay. Brief update. Brief update. Dr. Doctor. I just wanted to also say a thank you. While lots of things are slowing down, Dr. Mrs. Dowd's job and the superintendent's job and your job are not slowing down. So. Um, this is a time of deadlines and getting everything in order. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? And that's 5 0. And Mrs. Dowd, I think now we do the FY20 final budget approval. Yes. So this again, we have what was originally approved by school committee, and as we discussed throughout the process, once school committee approved it, the town manager was able to reallocate funds within accommodated costs. So he was able to reallocate out of the health benefits into out of district tuition and transportation, the 300,000, which then was approved through FinCom and town meeting. So we're all very thankful that we were able to reallocate some of that, which will help alleviate some of the pressures next year. So. This here is just to have the final approval by school committee, which is what was approved by us, and then the addition of the 300000 to the special education cost center. Right, and I think just a reminder to the committee, Ms. Dowd said that this, is, that this will help. This isn't the whole issue, um, as we had talked about during our budget, and uh, I know um, Mr. Bobbin had talked pretty passionately about also that this is a... Um, you know, a bigger, a bigger issue, but this is a significant yes. um, help, but we will still have a way. And this to will reset the watermark going mm -hmm. forward, that this will be the new base that will be growing that number off of to the extent right. we need to. Right, and that our district is not alone at all in the state, across the state, in dealing with these issues and having to figure out ways to address it long term. So, um, Dr. Doxer, how about read the motion? Final budget approval. Move to approve the final FY20 budget of 46,000, 40, 40, we don't want 46,000, 46,767,348 as appropriated by town meeting as well as approval of the individual cost center budgets. Second. Second by Mr. Robinson. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Great, that's five zero. Okay, now Mrs. Dowd, FYI 19 final budget update and approval. Well, almost final, almost but yeah, final. not quite. We're getting there. So what I have put in the packet is a memo requesting the school committee to approve some additional budget transfers. So as we presented at the May 30th meeting, Within the administration cost center and regular day cost center, we were projecting that we would have some surplus funds. 
So what we would like the committee is to approve us to transfer up to a certain dollar limit. So $20,000 from the administration cost center into special education and up to 150,000 out of the regular day cost center into special education. And the reason for this would be for the specific purpose of prepaying tuition for next year. We t traditionally target between two to 400,000 of prepayments if we have additional funds once we've encumbered all of our salaries, all of our other requirements. Um, knowing that we do have some pressure next year, this would help alleviate some of that. So the reason we're doing up to a specific dollar amount and not an actual one right now is we're actually going through and getting all of our final legal invoices, audit invoices, looking at the technology purchases and making sure we have everything encumbered. And then we'd like to take that extra amount and transfer it into special education to the extent those funds are available. And this, um, I'll go ahead and read the motion first. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Let's get the motion on the table and then we'll move to authorize the transfer of up to 20000 to the Special Education Cost Center from the Administrative Cost Center, utilizing savings and expense savings to be utilized to prepay special education tuition. And move to authorize the transfer of up to 150000 to the Special Education Cost Center from the regular day cost center utilizing savings and expense savings to be utilized to prepay special education tuition. Can I get a second on those two motions? Second. Second by Ms. Borowski on both motions. Um, um, question, Mr. Robinson, then Dr. Go ahead, oh, go ahead. Mine is just a quick one. I really like that um, you're forward thinking and prepaying these tuitions. There was an example of the letters we get saying when the tuition <laughs> is raised and in June that it was effective in yeah. June. It was, it was like reading Greek also, no offense to Greek, but it was very hard to understand. Mm -hmm. um, when we prepay, are we guaranteed that rate because we prepaid? No, no. what this is, is it's the district is setting aside funds to prepay up to three months of tuition per individual student per individual school. If the rate goes up, we would utilize next year's funding. If by some miracle the rate went down, that extra money would go back to free cash. So it's we're prepaying based upon what we know the rates to be for next year. There's always a chance they would change. Okay. Right. And also that's why it's critical to make sure that these are our placements that we feel certain of and um, have we, um, I doubt we've ever had anything ever go back to free cash. That has never happened. But, um, <laughs> Mr. Robinson? So that, so that was <coughs> part, of, part of my question was, so I guess it will be next week we'll get a final analysis of we'll be FY19. Pretty close. Next week we still have encumbrances and other items that are still getting recorded up through next Thursday and Friday. So typically I would give a final update at the July or August meeting once all entries and everything has been recorded. We still have some grant items we're going through for any additional offsets we can take from the grants or any additional invoices that are there's always the chance invoices will come in after year end that for if we weren't able to encumber them that would come out of any funds that we still have from so meeting. what so what it looks like the surplus will be is where you're coming up with the 170 yes. what, I, I, maybe I've asked this before I can't remember. is is this non-refundable so what happens if we don't that if we don't that placement doesn't happen for go, any reason. It would go back into free cash. So because we're so No, we're, I know, but we we can get it back we from landmark or wherever it sorry, goes. We yeah. actually do not pay the institutions yet. Right. We're encumbering the funds. We would pay the invoices next year as I should I have said that. That's a good point, Chuck. Yeah. So we would pay the invoices normally as we would next year. It's just we're able to encumber the funds. So we don't actually So it send. doesn't have to go to free cash. Yeah. Thanks. Right, and I think there's, there's been some, <clears throat> just in terms of things that are outstanding, and then we have a little bit of a complication because town hall is closed on Friday, and you know, so there's things that have to back off. So that's why. And we have estimates now for legal, but I do know um, it, 
if we have additional items that come up next week if there are phone calls so it's sort of that's why we don't we really won't know until the end of next week for some of we're just getting the final transportation invoices right and we have extended school year so we have days in june that some of the out of district placements go to so that's why next thursday even though it sounds like i would have final numbers there's still a little bit of movement but these are numbers based upon where either through less substitutes less more unpaid leaves a, a renewals that might have come in lower than we thought these are where some of these savings now that i only have a week left i'm much more comfortable mm -hmm. with them and i think the committee probably understands that when when um i as the chair or it's generally the chair would um require the resources of either the mas uh, the masc our field director that we don't pay for that um, dorothy presser has been extremely valuable and is always you know willing to answer questions and help advise and especially as we're trying to do policy i You've think we rely far. more on these folks but when we make calls to our attorney that um so we've been trying to just close in on oh, the last couple of weeks we've had a lot of interaction with our attorney um, just trying to answer questions related to policy and questions from members. So, um, can I just clarify something? You do pay for that to well, the dues. The dues. We don't pay. <laughs> which, yes. which went up again for next year? Okay, the dues to the MASC we pay, but I don't pay for every phone call no. that I make or every email that I that we might ask Dorothy to uh, to answer. So appreciate <coughs> that, Ms. Robinson. Uh, and this may be all. Just, I have a question, something you said earlier about uh, Colby looking at our policies. So is that after we've had MASC have a once over, the free look versus the, the paid look? So the, Dr. Dardy wanted to say. Yeah, I'll, so there, I think what, not to put words in, but uh, Mrs. Webb was indicating was the three policies that uh, in Colby's letter that she was referencing. Normally we do the MASC route, but in conversations, and we can say this later, but in conversations with Colby about these three public um, complaint policies that she feels that really a, should be a legal look at it because the MASC policies are not um, robust enough, shall we say. And, and our policies are a little older, you know, as yeah. I think you were on the committee that when we did a whole bunch of them in 2007, that was a big swath and we've done some in um, to, well, a, a bunch are sort of 2016. We did. Yeah, it's some. a lot of 2016. But I think there's going to be there'll be certain policies that we'll just be able to use the MASC guidance. And <coughs> we don't really need to engage yeah. legal, but there's going to be other policies where we're going to need to have Colby do part of the review process. So um, our attorney do the review. I should use the name of the firm. Um, Ms. Browski, any? Okay. Uh, so. We have the motions on the table. Do we want to um, vote the first motion, which was the transfer of up to 20,000 to the Special Education Cost Center from administration? All those in, oh, uh, Mr. Coram. Yes. Uh, Mr. Coram, just a couple of questions. So this was, so we ha are adding 170,000 in addition to 300,000 that the town manager found. And I guess that we're still, right? I mean, there was 300,000 added to the FY. 20 budget, right? For, and so we're adding yet another 170,000. I mean, I guess we knew sort of that we were under budgeting special ed for next year, and we still think with all of this added on, we're still, it's a right. still uh, the right number? Okay. Yeah. The other question I had was um, I seem to remember that in years past, we typically return a small amount, not, not huge numbers, but you know, typically a small amount to free cash every year. And I wonder. Why do we? Why would we have done that um, if we could every year have prepaid the out of district tuition? Every year we do prepay. What happens is if we think about a forty million dollar budget spread across five cost centers, within two of those cost centers you have seven to nine schools. You literally have drips and drabs across all of them. So to get those all to an exact number is. And when school committee meets to try to say this school has a hundred dollars in this line, and you always want to leave something there in case an invoice comes in, in case something happens. So we do our best to 
transfer money and every year we have prepaid mm -hmm. tuition. Okay. It just becomes a matter of how close the school committee meetings are and when we're getting exact bills. And again, I may have $1,000 left in extracurricular, 1500 in athletics. It's really, yeah. when you're looking at what gets turned back to the town, it is spread across five cost centers and thousands of individual lines. So okay. it's you. just a matter of being prudent and also the time and effort to transfer each one of those items almost becomes circling okay. the, the process know. and trying to get it that exact gets cumbersome. Thank you. Dr. Doxer? As I understand it too, if we get too exuberant about prepaying and then something changes in a placement, we, loot, we don't loot, the town doesn't lose the money, but the schools do. It goes yeah, into go free, free cash. cash. Yeah. So we have to be really careful about You're how we- You're only able to pay, prepay three, three months. months of tuition. You cannot pay, pay an entire year so you have to look at when the students are going to be there and you, you cannot prepay transportation it's just tuition so it, it becomes about a bit, a bit of a balancing act okay so i think we called for the vote on the first motion all those in favor and that's five zero and we'll call for the vote on the second motion which was to authorize the transfer of up to one hundred fifty thousand to the special education cost center from regular day all those in favor Okay. Um, okay, now we are on to the minutes. I mean the um, policies, sorry. So Dr. Jardy, do you want to just give a, like a recap of yes. where we are? Because we've been really busy over the last. So um, based on the feedback from the last meeting, I'm, I'm going to refer to the red line, blue line, green line version. <laughs> um, so I took all of the information that um, the committee brought up last time uh, and made the changes. We also got some additional guidance from um, the town clerk in terms of uh, some wording. This is on the minutes. This is minutes, minutes. we're doing right yeah. now. Yes. B E D G. Sorry. So uh, the changes since the last time uh, you'll notice are in blue and in green. The red was the last. The First, time. first reading so uh, in number one an accurate was added to summary um, we moved the note that was at the back of the policy to number four um, and made some changes there we crossed out the first sentence which um, was I know brought up at the last meeting um, made some changes within the note which you can see in blue and green uh, added the number five, which is if the meeting is recorded and is available for viewing, a link to the meeting will be provided. Um, added school in the last paragraph on that page uh, in front of committee. And then on the second page, and we actually put the website twice. That's interesting. But we put, oh, we must have, okay. Um, and then we added the home rule charter petition, uh, home rule charter, um, because it does reference in there the uh, pub, uh, the the policy on uh, remote participation. So that's what you see there, and um, the home rule charter. I'm sorry, the home rule charter petition was the minutes piece with the town clerk. Right. The town of Reading School Act Board policy 2.1.5 is on the remote participation. And the, just to clarify, so number five there is, um, if the meeting is recorded and available for viewing, the link to the meet, the link to the meeting, meaning the um, video, and then in the, the town clerk, if people go on our website, they know that when you look on the school website for the school committee minutes, it is a <coughs> link to the town website because the town and the town clerk is the person who does the EDM and records them. So it links it there. Our website might have other information on it, but the minutes are actually a link. So I think that this captured all of the input and we um, did re-verify with the town clerk. I think there was some the, the wording was a little awkward 
between the whole the clerk and the library and it got a little bit confused so we reworded that based on you know people's input um, over the last day mr. Robinson so I'm just I don't rem I can't remember everything was said at that meeting but was the word accurate added based on our feedback or was that from the town clerk it's about number one it was it's in number one and it's also in number I believe it, it was your feedback not it the was town. during our discussion, so discussion. That, that concerns me a little bit uh, it's relative whose definition of accurate uh, uh, so I just, you know it was the word accurate was in the note so in this section the new um, number four it, the written minutes include an accurate summary that was there the word accurate was in that note but we we added it um, up top and I think some of that was around the discussion of um, transcript versus summary and said well it's a, it's an accurate summary so but Dr. Doctor I, I actually share the concern because accurate is such a, a well, subjective yeah. term that if we were to say a summary then it would be less uh, I don't know the word to say I mean it would be less subjective less provocative maybe I'm okay if people want to make any sort of amendment to remove that we can we can do that um, so I actually think that's a great idea to remove the word accurate in both places okay. and I have a completely different objection to it which is if we're saying that we're providing a summary of the discussion, I think accurate, that's what a summary that's is. It's right, I agree. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think it's a little bit redundant and unnecessary. So Ms. Borowski, do you make a motion I, to? I move to remove the word um, an accurate in number one and replace <coughs> it with the word a. So instead of an accurate summary, it would read a summary. Okay. And I move also in number four that the words in accurate be replaced by the word a so it will read the written minutes include a summary great um, Second. seconded by mr parks any other discussion because we'll vote on that amendment so is it on that amendment oh not on that amendment i'm okay. sorry so then i want to vote on the, all those in favor of that amendment and that's five zero. And Dr. Doxer? Um, I had a question, and I'm not, um, so I know it was in there last time. Um, it says in under number, th the new number three, it says reports and documents relating to a formal motion may be omitted if they are referred to and identified by title and date. And I relate that to, um, in number one, it says that there'll be a list, where is it? A list of summary uh, at meeting is a- And a list of documents and exhibits used at the meeting. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's, I, I guess my question is, um, in our packet, we have copies of what the presentations are but in the minute and if we hand in something written then that is included with the minutes but this is if something is newly introduced during the meeting as long as it's identified then we don't need to have that document included in the i just wanted to understand better what's going to be omitted so i think like reports and documents relating to a formal motion may be omitted if they're referred to identified but does that mean I mean, you wouldn't put the budget in every me meeting minutes that we talk about the budget so when we make an approval for the budget it's referring to the that budget you don't put the whole budget in the meeting I, I think that's what this might refer that's what to it means. okay it's not referring I think to pre you're concerned about presentation materials yes I don't so, think it's referring no to that's that. in the packet those would be in the those packet would be put anyway. in the packet and sometimes they're, but they're added to the packet before we get here. But they're so also usually right. not. Then there's a final a packet done motion. after the meeting if there was any additional material. Right. Okay, so that will still include, like, if someone brought um, 
take, for instance, a policy that ended up impacting the conversation. So if we brought that, that's that's a sticky because we could just go to the policy book. It could be yeah, you, the policy would you it would, would be like the budget. The policy. You don't need to include no, you don't that. Need to. All right, is there any further discussion? Um, Mr. Quorum? I just had one question at the end where it says the town clerk will do such and such. And my question is whether it's appropriate for school committee policy to direct the town clerk or whether the wording should be referred, you know, changed to say the town clerk will be, the committee will ask the town clerk to. It's actually, this is required by our well, charter. It's, yeah. So and the town and clerk actually wrote this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's school committee policy, right? So right. right. But and she, school committee is, does not actually direct, manage the town clerk. But this is a responsibility of the town clerk. Yeah. So Laura yeah. actually wrote this and rewrote it. Yeah, and rewrote okay. it. Um, so, and that was sort of the, the issue when we tried to do this months ago, is that we updated and... Um, basically used the MASD language and didn't realize that the charter, that our charter had this very specific language in it that required the town clerk. So, yes, in this case, it's appropriate. I, I'm going to guess there's very few, if no other places, that we do something like that. All right, any other, no other dialogue? We'll take a vote on the motion to approve the minutes policy. Oh, sorry, BEDG. Um, so amended, right, Dr. Doxer? Right. Move to accept the second reading of revised policy BEDG minutes. All those second. in favor? All those in favor? Five zero. Excellent. Okay. Now, um, the public comment policy. So, Dr. Darty, do you want to sort of introduce this sure. again? For so, um, based on the information that we discussed at the last school committee meeting on this policy, we did go back to legal counsel to get um, their opinion on this. And what is has been inserted since the last meeting is, I believe, in blue. Um, in BEDH, public comments shall be limited to items that are within the school committee's authority. The, uh, the red piece, I believe, was um, already there. Um, and then if you go to the next page, uh, it clarifies further what those areas are. And so just so that everyone here on the committee knows, we had a lot of dialogue, Dr. Dari and I did with um, Colby. Mrs. Dowd is waiting for that information. Um, but anyways, we had a lot of dialogue, and I know that everyone here is really concerned about the ability for us to stay within the bounds of our policy and the things that are within our control and make sure that we are properly sort of, you know, protecting the <coughs> um, staff, the teachers, and other people's students, our students. But um, so that has all been very well communicated with uh, to Colby and, and she wrote on them a legal. she wrote that letter and yeah. she basically is w will now be in the process of um, looking at the other policies and recommending um, changes and updates to those two policies because the I know um, you know the we've heard before when people come and they say good things, we like to hear it, but we don't like to hear the bad things. And I, I you know, the complaints, we actually have a complete policy on complaints and um, actually two of them. So those will need to be um, updated. But, and if, I don't, I'm sure people had a chance to read Colby's um, explanation. And I did also confer with her. Does anybody have any questions? Mr. Robinson? So, well, actually, not on the, not yet on the changes, but one thing I noticed on the, I guess it's the last paragraph. <clears throat> Should the chair invite comments on docketed items, he or she will request that individuals in attendance who wish to speak signify such by raising their hand. I think should 
signifies such by stating their name and raising, raising their hand and stating their name. It's the last. Stating their name and address. I think that's it. It has to be a resident, right? So the chair of the on Doug, he or she will request that any who, who wish to speak signify such by raising their hand. I don't, we always do ask people to identify themselves. Um, well, we're, we're, we may oh, be, sorry. but the policy should be in line with what yeah, we're Yeah, I just, asking. sorry, I meant to hand these out earlier to you guys. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. So I just am wondering if. Chuck, I was just wondering if perhaps this is in these other policies, that's all. But I think in either case, just wanted to take a quick look. These are, are these the cross-reference ones? The, and these are the ones that Colby is indicating Those are the ones need. That Colby, I, yeah. I think it's important to understand that these are two separate mechanisms. Right. These are not the same. Yeah. What, are we, what are you referring to? The, the, the policies that Elaine just passed out, we're not, uh, which we're, are, we're not doing these tonight. Right. No, yeah. we, right. you're not. I just, I, we're not doing these tonight. I just, I know in, in terms of Colby's statement about um, that we, that we need, that's the same one. I better give you that, sorry. So, um, so I, I think, I'm not so sure. I think we could add that um, and it would be fine. Ms. Borowski. So I think. I think I'm comfortable, I, I'm not sure I quite understood, so if I got you wrong, correct me, but I think I'm okay with it the way it is, because this is our standard practice right now. If we're having a discussion as a committee about a document <coughs> item and it's going back and forth, and the chair recognizes somebody raising their hand, I wouldn't want them yelling out their name. They raise their hand to say, I would like to see, and then the chair, when it's appropriate, calls on them. So when they, take, well, they take the microphone, they should identify themselves by name and address. I think, can I rebut yeah. that? So. If, we, oh, wait, if, we're re, if we're having accurate, to, to use accurate minutes, the, the record keeper should know who made the comment. Right. Uh, we, I think we do have it in number, it's in number one and two, because to, for public input, really, so I think this is the difference. For public input, we ask people to sign in, and we actually, for that 15-minute time period under number two, we have a sign-in sheet. Any person wishing to speak must identify him or herself by name and address, specify the interest they're wishing to speak, right? Because that's right, the Right, that's for public input. But I'm, I was talking about the last, which is not, that's actually. Right, this is the docketed items. Agenda. If you don't, I mean, if you, I, I'm not, I don't feel passionate about it. I just think that it's good for the, for the, record to show. Well, we could add the chair will ask. So it's consistent with this language. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a separate sentence because they, they I'm sorry. May I? Yes, keep going. Ms. Baraski. Um, yeah. the, the public should indicate a desire to speak to a docketed item simply by raising their hand. That's appropriate. But I think your point is when they do, when they are recognized, they should identify themselves. So it could be I that, that's that. Right. The chair. Common courtesy. Yeah. And, well, and, and for the minutes. You're absolutely right. So any person that's any person recognized by the chair yep. must identify him or so, herself by name and address, yep. right? So we just take that language, and I think that's fine. So we add that um, after uh, the sentence of signify by raising their hand, we basically just take this language from the front that says. Um, Persons so recognized, persons recognized by the chair must identify him or herself by name and address. You can tweak that language there. Do no, we I think it's perfect. I think that's okay. Doctor, do, do we want to? I think we should also say approaches the microphone and sends their name. Says their name. Well, I, I don't know that we need to get that specific. Because what if we're in a spot where we don't have a microphone or you know something? So I think okay. generally they. But, we just got to watch, but so I think what we added there, Jean, can you sort of read what we might have added? What there? I have, and I'm not sure it's exactly what you have, is any person recognized by the chair must identify him or herself by name and address. 
And I'm just double checking to make sure. You're right, it should be exactly consistent with number one. Yeah. Must identify him or herself by name and address. Yep, so number three is any person wishing to speak must identify him or herself by name or address. And what we're adding here is any person recognized by the chair must identify him or herself. Does that get it? By name and address. Yeah. At the end, so that's at the, the very last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Engelson, um, did you capture that? Or you, okay. So, Ms. Bruski, can you make that amendment? Or Mr. Robinson, do you want to make that amendment? Can you read it again? <laughs> <laughs> I move to add um, at the end of the final paragraph of policy, BEDH, um, the paragraph ending, should the chair invite comments on docketed items, he slash she will request that individuals in attendance who wish to speak signify as such by raising their hand. I move to add a sentence at that point that reads, any person recognized by the chair must identify him or herself by name and address. Second. Okay, any further discussion on that one? And then a vote, all those in favor? Excellent, I think that was a very good add. Yeah. Dr. Doxer? So I've been um, kind of outspoken about my my feelings that there ought to be due diligence when people come to um, public public input to talk about something they're complaining about and the way I have gotten more comfortable with us not inserting um, the line that requires people to go through due process before they come to complain to us is being appeased by the fact that we have these complaint policies. So I just, um, the question sort of embedded in this is, um, I'm glad we'll be cross-referencing the complaint policy because when you come for public input, if it is a complaint, then we should be following the complaint policy before mm -hmm. we get to the school committee to stand up and complain about uh, per, that something that involves a particular person. That in the complaint policy, for instance, um, KE, yes. there is a process articulated of who you go to first and that we recommend that people approach those that mo are most directly involved personally to see if they can resolve the concerns before they come to our public meeting to do that. Um, and yes, it has to, whatever comes to us has to be within our jurisdiction. But even if it's it, within our jurisdiction, there's a process to follow before people get to us. Mm -hmm. And the complaint procedure would address that. Yes. We're not I, talking about right. I think she no, was we're not, but I'm saying that's why yeah. I am getting comfortable with that not being in our policy. This policy. Not, this it doesn't need to be in the public comment policy because it's really covered in the public complaint policy. So I think Linda was just saying this was an issue, but she's, you're comfortable with it now. I'm and getting with, more comfortable right. with it because the complaint policy right. articulates what needs to happen before people come here. Mm -hmm. to to share their complaints. Mr. So I'm just I'm going back to the public comment policy. Uh, I guess I number seven. I, I, I certainly get the intent. I, is, I assume Colby wrote number this seven. Is, this is we were this yes, number Colby, seven. Colby We've wrote, been Colby wrote back and seven. forth so with I Colby several times. So I certainly understand the the. I, I, I wasn't part of those, but I, I, I know the parties that discussed yeah. it and can understand what was talked about, and I agree. Uh, my only concern with seven is what, what happens, and this is maybe I'm splitting hairs, but what happens if a committee or a public member of the public wants to come up and talk about something that you know, isn't necessarily part of our jurisdiction, but it's something that we'd want, like Reading 375, you know, something that generic, uh, that's, that's not, 
that's this policy saying we're only going to listen to stuff that relates to uh, our, our specific duties under and reform, really, right? Oh, right. Policy is uh, budget for yep. years. Ms. And I'm not. I'm not saying I don't want it. I just. I'd like to no. discuss that more. That's all. I think it's a really good point. Um, I wonder if the answer to that isn't. I think the change then is I'd like to come talk about this thing that for the public good it may not fall under the <coughs> purview of the school committee, but I want to talk about it. The answer might be then the chair needs to put you on the agenda. And maybe it's something that wasn't reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance, so the chair makes a decision to add that as an agenda item um, because <coughs> I was unaware of two days ago and I don't think there's any harm to this. So I, I think maybe the answer is getting that person on the agenda as opposed to using public comment. It's just mm. spitballing and reacting. <coughs> Right. I see what you're saying, but I, I, does it prevent us from hearing something like that? That would be a way for us to be able to hear something like that. Yeah. Um, just on, I'm thinking, I, I think that was <coughs> an incredibly good point because I like to know about the things that are impacting our students and, and how they impact our schools, like 375, a great example. I'm wondering about the word issues. Um, issues sort of implies negativity. Um, um, so I'm talking the second, second paragraph. Um, the committee would like to the opportunity to hear from the public on, it says, issues that affect the school district and are within the scoop, scope of the so, committee's responsibilities. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if that. If, if that could be made into two sentences. Well, how about you just change it to items? I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think we're splitting hairs here and I'm not sure that issues is, what has that negative connotation for every, it, you know, it doesn't have to have a negative connotation. It, it might, but it doesn't have to. So. Or, or it could be adding. Um, I don't really want to add another sentence so to this. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah, so down below you have, uh, on number seven, the word items is used. You could substitute items for issue, issues for items. If you yeah, public comment should be limited to items that are within the school. That's yeah, so Colby's items. language, right? Yeah, and then that, that if, and it says that affect the school system. The district and, uh, and are within the scope of the school. Ms. Borowski? I, I guess I don't have that negative connotation with the word issues. And what I'm thinking of is the phrase issues of the day. But that doesn't to me have a negative connotation. So I, for whatever reason, I'm okay with issues in the second paragraph and I'm, I like items in number seven. I don't, it's not something I feel strongly about. But. And again, given that we've had, like I said, Colby's been over this about three times. So I'm just wondering if, uh, oh, sorry, Dr. Doxer. I, I'm looking at the sentence and I'm wondering if we interpret it broadly, whether it allows for those things that, um, like 375, or like I'm thinking of if Understanding Disabilities wants to give a report, or if. if it, there's, um, that's, that's an example where they would really be on the agenda. You probably would really put them on the agenda, because that would be um, thought out. I or if yeah, I'm three, uh, <coughs> saying disabilities is usually an agenda item. They do a presentation. Uh, I'll bring up okay. I'll, I'm thinking about a different example. So we're working on a human rights commission or organization within town. If something happens that they are responding to and they want to come, let us know about that and what they're doing about it. They might want to come to public comment, and there might not be the two days to get it on the agenda. So would that fall under that, mm -hmm. you don't have two days? I mean, an example like Pittsburgh, you know, talking about anti-Semitism and they want to make a statement to the school community. Again, I think that, so I'm, I don't think that this policy precludes that from coming that's, to our that's meeting. That's what I'm asking. I, I, don't, I don't think that it, it would, but it might mean that it needs to come in as a, it would come in as an agenda item and I don't, and, you know, the examples that you're trying to give are things that I think are a little bit more anticipated. And I also think that, um, I think that we have to hold, 
you know, also make sure that we are adhering to the standard, that they are things that affect the school district um, and are within the scope of the committee's responsibilities. So, you know, the select board hears, hears lots and lots of things that impact the community. That's their purview, right? Um, so, Mr. Robinson. Add another comment to that. Uh, so a lot of times <clears throat> when people come to public comment, they're more than a lot of the time, it's something that's operational mm -hmm. that they're coming to talk about that isn't within our purview. But, you know, and I, I'm not trying to be, it may be that, that gives, you know, John or Chris or Gail or uh, Jen, Jen mm -hmm. the opportunity to hear something that someone, did, you know, I don't know, you know, just. But they, they that, those are. That they didn't call you or come to your office and it's there up and we can you know say well that's an operational thing it's not within our purview right we say thank you typically we say thank you and dr darty the staff are here yeah. right so it's up to the chair always to whether you're going to engage yeah. in some dialogue or ask the administration to respond to that but i, I think i mean i think that you know i, I think that seven almost wipes out what public comment is because the other stuff that people are talking the stuff that's within our purview is generally docketed items anyway and that's stuff that people are going to talk about i don't during the docketed item. during the docketed item i think that mm -hmm. uh, right you know i you know it's, yeah again I'm, I'm not um, Ms. Sprowski? I could see I could see someone having something to say to the committee about something that falls in our purview when it's not documented for that meeting. So maybe I become aware of something in the district that I care passionately about. And in your next budget cycle, I would like you to really contemplate funding X, Y, and Z. You're not discussing the budget tonight. Maybe you're not discussing the budget for four months, but I would like to make this statement. So I think, right. I think there are examples where the public may have something to say on something that falls under our purview. And that, that's the night they don't want to wait six Bring months. Bring it up at another mm -hmm. meeting. Exactly. Right. So, so. I, I, think it's, I think that could happen. Yeah. And the policy supports that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It, it actually very in, implicitly says that is what public comment is for. Right. For you to come and say whatever you want to say under something that falls under our purview publicly whenever you want to. Right. I, Dr. Doctor? I think it's also important that our policy direct people to the appropriate people <coughs> before they come to us. Because if it's not something that we sh should be s brought to us yet, then it's it's prematurely being brought here, and there can be very um, there can be repercussions for that that aren't necessarily um, fair or appropriate. And so I think it's important that we do set some boundaries about mm -hmm. what should be brought to us. And our complaint process should also help with that. This is where I was coming from mm -hmm. with my concerns. Right. So I'm sorry, I sort of lost track. Did we, did we vote in that amendment yet? The uh, sentence? We did. I think yes. we did. Yes. Yes. We voted in. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. We voted in the, yes. the July okay. sentence. So, um, Ms. Borowski? I have a completely separate point to make, and it's actually um, a point of gratitude. I don't know if it was the superintendent or the chair or someone else who talked to our attorney about um, having a legal opinion on this and oh. including it in the packet, and I just wanted to say thank you to whoever's idea that was. Um, it, it put, there were some concerns I had after our last meeting, and this legal opinion very much eased my mind, so I just wanted to thank you for that additional work. I think we wore Colby down, and she said, That's I have one. to. Colby was on her way to Maine. <laughs> I was in, on my way to Logan <laughs> Airport <laughs> oh, like, when we had that conversation. Yes. I, think, I think it's not only helpful for the community yes. to have this, I think it'll be helpful for the public as well. So yeah. that was time and money well spent. Yeah, and I, I did. That's I, regarding I, the Natick stuff? Yeah. Just, just yeah. the, the letter opinion. because we went. We really felt like we needed that because John and I had had pushed pretty, pretty um, forcefully on Kobe about yeah. some of these other pieces right. that really are woven into other policies. And yep. and then when we gave her the other policies, we asked her to look at the full picture. That's when she said, "Let me write you a letter." Right. 
right. so that you guys all that everyone can understand and then let's make it a priority for me to look at those other policies so that's those will be next <laughs> mr park sorry sorry what chuck is talking about could still be discussed in office hours and then brought forward if needed correct um yeah in terms I of mean, we can say you know what yes this fits within these guidelines you can bring it up Mm -hmm. or this is operational you need to refer to this right so that's really the use of office hours they're not every before correct every they're not right. but right so people could bring issues or concerns to the office hours also and then get some direction or guidance from those committee members as to like sort of what's the appropriate next step yep. okay are we ready for a vote Okay, so Dr. Doxer, can you read the motion again? Just Move to accept the second reading of revised policy BEDH with the amendment. Yeah, which is public, public, public participation. Public comment oh, pu at school committee meetings. Public comment at school committee meetings. Yeah, second. Okay, all those in favor? And that's five zero. Excellent. All right, so we have done the hard policy work. We have one more item, I believe, from Mrs. Dowd. We have some surplus equipment, is that correct? Correct. So included in the packet is a list of items that we are requesting the school committee to clear as surplus. We typically go through this process on an annual basis rather than come multiple times during the year. This is a culmination of as we're purchasing new technology or doing technology projects, we have items that we would need to declare as surplus, as well as as we're going through the end of the year, through all of the classrooms, as where teachers are checking out, as we're looking at moving items around, we just felt it was more comprehensive to do this once a year, so that might be why it looks a little bit large. And as, um, you know, we, we've been very fortunate with some of our capital funding, so we did the large Wi-Fi process last year, so all of the old access points were now declaring as surplus. Um, we've been very fortunate to be able to replenish our technology as we go through the life cycle of the computers. And we do utilize and we, we upgrade them, we, we do our best with them, but you do get to a point where batteries aren't holding charges, you can no longer upgrade the items due to changes in technology as well as through wear and tear you have keyboards on laptops and computers that are missing keys key sticks so we do our best to cobble them together we also utilize parts from one computer to repair others so um, the for, as far as the athletics we have gymnastic equipment that actually has been sitting for a while we actually use I think Elaine Webb used it when she was here <laughs> that's, that's what we were school. thinking we were joking about that earlier. So we actually utilize an external source for our gymnastics program. So this is equipment that we have there that we're actually not utilizing that. As you know, space is always at a premium. So we are looking to be able to free up some of that space as well. Um, and then each building goes through, as I mentioned, and looks at whether or not as part of the most recent inspections by the fire department they always they come through continuously they may tag additional items that do not meet fire code so we're also continuously going through that process to make sure any of those items we're disposing of as well any other any questions um, dr. doctor can you read the motion and then Move to declare the items listed in the Chief Financial Officer's memorandum dated June 17, 2019, as surplus property. Second. Seconded by Mr. Parks. Any other questions, Mr. Robinson? When we sell stuff like that, athletic equipment, does it, I assume there's some town of. It goes back to that, free. So the that way. sells it with a no liability or. It could be oftentimes what we'll do is before we go down that road, we'll offer it up to either other departments within the town or other school districts. So oftentimes you'll see school districts offering it up and basically if you come and get it, 
it's yours. If we're not able to do that and it has a salvage value, we would go through the process of posting it on the state's website. Um, and then any funds we would receive go back to the town. So typically other school districts would step up for items that they're able to utilize and they'll come and pick them up. Dr. Doxer. I loved learning that that our tech department uses whatever is usable to keep what we have working. It's not, nothing's being thrown away that hasn't been used and reused and, and usable parts have been recycled. So I was really happy about that. <laughs> That'll be next yeah, year. Yeah, next year. Yeah. He said, where's the courier car? Oh, 50 Trade cents. That one in. <laughs> I don't think you'll get much sense. It's, it's a good new driver. <laughs> that was the driver's ed car. Yeah, uh, that's years ago. Yeah. That's what we thought. Are there any other questions on the surplus equipment? All those in favor of the motion? And that is 5 0. Um, I think we're done. I just want to say, when was our last meeting? Was it May 30th? Yes. May 30th. So we all um, got to attend graduation. <laughs> and I was like realizing that I think it was an absolutely wonderful graduation and I want to thank um, Dr. Darty and all the staff, Principal Boynton, and um, it was a great day. All the comments, um, Dr. Darty, your, um, your uh, comments and Principal Boynton's were just very inspiring. I think I always find them, I know you're directing them towards the students but they are always um, very poignant, even for adults. So I just want to thank you for all that hard work and uh, all our facilities people who made that happen. And so that's excellent. So I think that was between, between last time and this time, we got to do the funnest thing we ever do all year. Yeah. <laughs> so. Without any tweets the next day. All right, I think that concludes. So we want to go to executive session. Oh, true. I forgot. Right. We need to. Are you gonna make that motion? Yeah. Move to. So move to enter executive session for the approval of minutes and not to return to open session. Second. All those. A oh, roll, roll call. Mr. Parks. Ms. Sprowski. Yes. Dr. Yes. Boxer. Mr. Robinson. Yes. Mrs. Webb. Yes. Okay. Thank you.